Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Hey, listen, I'm starting a new series today called Change. Everybody say change. And if you notice, you got a bookmark and it says can change. And, uh, but I'm going to kind of throw you for a loop because um, whenever I bring series, people always think they know what I'm going to talk about. And uh, yes, I am going to talk about change, but I want to talk about the origin or the enemy that keeps you and me from change. Because you can change your furniture all you want and you're still there, right? You can change your hair and you're still you, right? You can change your clothes and uh, you still look the same, right? And so you can change all of the outer stuff that we see, but God wants us to change from the inside out, not from the outside in. And we have just so many people that are just so focused on the external and not really focused on the internal things that we got to change in our heart. And so for the next few weeks, we're going to talk about this wonderful, amazing thing that I think we all want, hopefully, called change. And the reason I want to talk about change is because when you, when you say, when you say, or when you claim that you know God, here's what you're saying, that when God invaded my life, my life changed. You see, when God invades a person's life, there must be evidence that there is change in your life. You can't say, I know God, and you still act the same, live the same, talk the same. There's no way in hell that you would be that same person. There really isn't. When God invades a person's life, they're changed. And people can see the change. People look at you and we're like, man, you're different. It's evident. When God touches a life, it's evident. When God heals someone, it's evident. When God restores someone's life, it's evident. Man, there is evidence of the change that God does. Now, God wants to make an exchange. Everybody say exchange. Yeah, he wants to make an exchange with you today. But today, you make a personal decision whether you want to exchange with him. He wants to increase and manifest his presence in your life in exchange for your dignity and your reputation. What do I mean by that? I believe that not every Christian is really walking in the fullness and the knowledge of God. It's wonderful that you, 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 you got your, your salvation helmet, right? Like you say, I'm a Christian, I'm saved. That's awesome, man. I'm, I'm glad you're going to heaven. But God doesn't want you to live like hell on earth while you're going to heaven. God wants you to be the kind of Christian that, that, that gets to know God deeper in this relationship. In other words, it is impossible for you to know God and not change. It is so, put, put my point up there, guys. Look, look at this. To know him and remain unchanged is impossible. Let's read this together. Ready? To know him and remain unchanged is impossible. There's no possible way that you can say, I know God and you haven't changed. But I want to talk to Christians too. Because I know that sometimes as a Christian, you can, be, you can be so saved that nothing changes you anymore. Why? Because there's so many Christians that feel like they've already arrived. I already got all the change I need. No, listen, you go from glory to glory. You go from mountaintop to mountaintop with God. God is always revealing himself to you and me just a little bit more. All right? So right now, I'm just going to be up front with you and me. Mauricio, you're so yesterday. Okay, you got to you got to tell yourself you're yesterday. God wants to create new testimonies with you. God wants to create new new stories with you. God wants to create uh, new 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 stories of of how he how he's going to show up and show off. And he wants you to be able to tell different people like, man, look, here's the evidence of God in my life. God wants that for you and me. But we all have to be willing to exchange in order to receive the change that we need. If not, you'll never elevate your relationship with God in the place he wants it to be, really. God's not withholding himself. God's not playing peekaboo. He's not playing hide and seek. 
God's like, man, I want to know you this year, Mauricio. Man, Mauricio, I want you to know me this year. There are some things about me that you don't know of yet. That's the beautiful thing about a relationship. When you have a healthy, awesome relationship, you always get to know just a little bit more of that person. Come on, wouldn't it be boring if all you did was have a relationship with someone and all you knew was their name, their, their date of birth, uh, what else, man, the car they drive. That's boring. But, that, man, like I find new buttons I push in my wife to get her tick. I'm like, wow, I didn't know that worked. You know, like, <laughs> that's amazing. It's been 23 years, and I, that's a new fun. It's like, wow, that's so, you learn something new, right? Or, or you learn something new on what blesses a person. And you're like, well, I didn't know you like that. That's so cool. Okay, I'll rub your hair like that, you know? It's, it's, it's amazing. God, God's saying, I want you to know me in 2018 in a deeper way. Is that okay with you guys? Okay, so to know him and remain unchanged is impossible. You can't change an unchanged mind, that's for sure. For example, there's no way that you can change my mind about flies. Like, flies are annoying. Flies are irritating. Flies are disgusting, man. You know, flies, you know what all flies do? All flies do is they fly and they look for you and your food and they poop and vomit on you. So when they land, oh, I'm just going to say it, all right? I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it because it should irritate. That's why I'm saying I know for a fact I hate flies. When a fly lands on your food, it just pooped or vomited, and it definitely laid an egg. And, uh, and I, I'll never forget the day. You know what? I'm, I'm an advocate. I, I love camping now. How many, any campers out there? Okay, I remember the first time I'm a young guy, you know, married. I got my little ones. And, and I said, you know what? We're going to do a family thing now. We're going to be the, the Ruiz campers. And, and we went camping. And I go like straight up tent style. And I'll never forget, I started camping. And while we're camping, you know what? Of course, you start, you know, setting up the tent. You start setting up, you know, the, the fire and everything. And definitely, if you're Mexican, you always have carne asada. <laughs> it's like carne asada every single night, you know what I'm saying? And pico de gallo, right? And frijoles. And arroz. And all that. And then maybe, maybe just a hot dog here and there. But you know what? I would cook for us, and these flies, these flies would begin to just come from everywhere. And, and you know, I'm just like trying to eat it, and it's like, zzz, and you get that nasty buzz, right? And you're just trying to, and then next thing you know, you're, you're like, uh, uh. And and, uh, and and the next thing you know, you got a fly swan, and you're just like, uh, 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 right? And you're just so, you're so distracted with the flies instead of being so attracted to what's in front of you, your family, your children, you know what, your purpose, your call. Man, you went there to camp, not to swat flies all day long. Next thing you know, like, you start keeping tell, like, oh, my God, I killed 50 flies. It was so awesome. Like, <laughs> Like, that's your testimony right there when you come back home. How was camp? Killed 50, man, you know? I, I, that, that was my ISIS right there, you know? I just, I, I got rid of them. I got rid of them. And, uh, and it really does. They, they irritate you. But I'm convinced, I'm fully convinced that flies, they just come to distract you. Instead of coming and, and, and focusing on what you went there to do, which is to hang out, you know, have some peace, have some rest, you know it, these flies just come out of everywhere. Well, listen, that is a truth, and it's interesting because as I started thinking about this message, I started thinking, wow, you know what, what's going to get rid of these flies in the camp? And then I learned about a beautiful oil called, Cit is it Citronella? Love that thing. And then I got smarter. Man, then I started getting tiki torches everywhere. So then my camp became like, like Hawaii. Just, <laughs> just like you go, just everywhere, tiki torches and, and everything's just lit, man. Just, and it was the most amazing. And you know what? The flies weren't coming anymore. It was the most amazing thing. But as I started studying about, um, you know, flies, it made total sense because I realized that, you know what? Change, flies, change, flies, change, flies, change. Lies. The enemy of change is not flies, but lies. Listen to me. Satan is known 
one of his name is known as the Lord of the Flies. And it makes total sense because you cancel the F and he's the father of lies. And I'll tell you right now, every single one of us right now, whether you like it or not, I don't care. You can argue with me. You can sit with me, call me, email me. But every single one of us right now are battling with at least one lie. Like it or not. Are you cursing us, Pastor? No, it's the reality. You see, some of you right now, you have accepted the lie. Come on, the fly, the Lord of flies, Satan, has come and he's dropped the eggs down in your head. And he's told you lies like, you know what? You're never going to get healthy again. Or there are people here that have thought this. You know what? I'm going to die at an early age. There are people that think, you know what? I'm never going to have enough for retirement. I have to keep working. That, those are all lies. God doesn't want you to be infested with lies. There are people here that have the lie of, you know what? I'm not smart enough. I can't have that kind of job. I can't drive that kind of vehicle. I can't live in that kind of neighborhood. Who told you that? And so Satan is, is the Lord of the flies. As a matter of fact, if you translate it, it was Beelzebub is what they called uh, Satan. Beelzebub translate into the Lord of the flies. And you know what? He's so good at lying to us. You know what? When you're, when you're, when you're tormented with stuff in your head, when you're going through like challenges in your life, when you see your children going a little cray cray wild, maybe you have a family member who's addicted to alcohol, drugs, or, or you know someone that, that is completely just enraged with all kinds of just ideas and it hurts you and you look at them you're like they're never going to change that's a lie what do you mean they're never going to change listen if you can change god can change them and so we start dwelling on lies some of you right now let me tell you something you are just accepting the comfort of what you're living or what you've learned to coexist with instead of accepting the truth. For example, I told you my testimony a few weeks ago. For one whole year, I learned to coexist with and a knee pain. For one year. Here, I'm, I'm a believer. I know the word of God. I believe in you. I believe in the power of God. But I learned to coexist and live with my pain. And I'm just like, okay, that's okay. I'll just learn how to walk with it stronger when I preach. You know, uh, you know the anointing will just take it. And then when I get off, okay, Lord, I can, you can bring it back. I'm like, what the heck are you talking about? Until finally, a few weeks ago, I said, enough. And let me tell you something. I, I got rid of the Lord of the flies with his lies that I have to keep living this way. I laid hands on my knee, and I declared God's truth. I declared my healing. And long behold, man, I'm telling you, I don't care. You can argue my theology, but you can't argue my story. Jesus healed my knee. I got a whole brand new knee. It's amazing. That's what God wants us to do in 2018. He wants us to swat away the Lord of your flies in your home, in your company, in your business, in your relationships. God wants change. Are you listening to me? Yes. Satan was so, he's so delusioned, like he's so delusioned that he got Pharisees to think something of Jesus. There's a story in the Bible. Go with me real quick, 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 quick. Because you got to understand this. Luke 11, verse 14 and 15. These are people of God. These are Pharisees, people that were practicing religion. They were practicing laws. They were trying to live up under the Ten Commandments, and we knew they were failing. They knew they were failing. And so look what they say. Look how delusion the Lord of the flies is. Look. And he was casting out a demon. Remember say casting out. So this is Jesus. Jesus is there. Whack. Whack. He's casting them out. He's casting out a demon, right? And it was mute. So it was when the demon had gone out that the mute spoke. So we see a miracle right there. So listen, when God's presence comes in, things change. And the multitudes marvel like, what? Who is this fly swatter? And they marvel. But some of them said, he cast out demons by Beelzebub. How delusion can you be to think that your Savior would be the Lord of the flies? 
But let me ask you this. How delusion can you be to believe the father of lies instead of believing the father of truth? How delusional can you be? How delusion, how watered down can you be as a believer to accept and to coexist with whatever it is that you're dealing with or whatever lifestyle you have and to just allow it just to keep. Listen, we're no different than the Pharisees. And look, and he says, he casts out demons by Beelzebub. In other words, man, Jesus is, a, is, a, is the Lord of the flies and he takes out flies because he's a fly. That's crazy. And he says, and he's the ruler of the demons. We're talking about people of God. We're just talking smack about your Lord and Savior. How is that possible? But you know what? I don't think that the church is very far away from this type of thinking either, honestly. We can't keep saying change in 2018 or change in 2017, but you've, you've, you've committed the same, the same situations. You've committed the same sins. You've committed the same acts. You've committed the same talk. You've, it's like you've been so committed yeah, you start off strong, like, here's the fact. Uh, everyone in this world, whether you're a Christian or not, they set goals, right? Everybody gets excited, yay! But two weeks later, they give up their goals. Why? Because the moment you decide that you're going to start doing something awesome for God, get ready for the flies. Why? They distract you from the purpose and plan that you want from God. The moment that people, and I have always hear this, and I'll just give you a good illustration. People in this church, and I've been in ministry for a while, have said, man, you know what? The moment I got closer to God, man, all hell broke loose. Of course it did. Because the mo moment you decided to take your life serious with God, of course, the flies are going to come to distract you from your healing. The flies are going to come distract you from your purpose. The flies are going to come and distract you from God's plan for your life. And so he's the Lord of the flies. That's what he does. He's great at that. And so, of course, the moment, like some of you, you may be very healthy in your walk with God. Let me tell you something. There's more with God. You know, like maybe there's some of you that you're wanting to start a business this year. Well, guess what? The moment you start that business, the Lord of the flies is coming. It's so true. I know it's cliche. New level, new devil. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. It's true. Man, like it or leave it. It's the reality. Why? Do you think that the enemy wants to, to, to see you change? Listen, here's, here's the truth. Okay, here's the truth. Satan wants to keep you, I'll just make a you, from change. Okay, so he wants to keep you bound, bound with what? Bound with stress, bound with depression, bound with oppression. Come on, he wants to keep you sick. Come on, you're always sick every single year. What's wrong with you? I'm sick. I got the flu. I got the cold. I got, and I listen, I believe in all that. It happens. But why do I have to accept that? Like, why do I? Well, because it's reality. Okay, fine. But by his stripes, I'm healed. So either I'm healed by his stripes or I'm not. Which one is it? Which one is it? I, I can make a decision to stand up against, like, my wife used to struggle with migraines. She had chronic migraines. We were in the hospital over and over Year after year after year after year, emergency room, emer they, they started calling me doctor, man. I mean, they always saw me there. It was just like never, ne it just never stopped. And you know what? It didn't stop until I finally said, you know what? Enough. And I laid hands on it. I said, in the name of Jesus, man, by his stripes you're healed. And we had this miracle story I'm not going to get into. It was pretty wild. It was amazing what God showed me in the spirit. And then, boom, she was instantly healed. And since that day, never again has she ever had a migraine headache. Now, mind you, they used to shoot her up with morphine every single time we went to the hospital. And we would be there for up to three days. Aren't you sick of being sick? Aren't you tired of being tired? Aren't you tired of praying the same old prayer? And nothing changes, God bless you. And nothing changes. Listen, if you don't know the origin of, 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 of the enemy who keeps you from change, he wants to keep you bound, sick. He wants to keep you what? Unfaithful. Heck yeah. He doesn't want you to be faithful. God forbid you're faithful to God because if you were faithful to God, wow. 
Man, God would use your life to change the world. God would use your life to change your family. And so he wants to keep you from being faithful. Okay? You know what? He also wants to keep you not only bound sick. He wants to keep you broke. He wants to keep you broke. He wants you to be broken hearted. And he wants you to literally be broke. Just broke all the time. Just always in power. But guess what? He keeps you that way because he wants to keep you so that you never change. On, on the other note, God wants to, come on, the big G, God wants to change your heart. God wants to change your mind. God wants to change your health. Right? God wants to change your family. Come on. That's what God wants to do. What does Satan want to do? Satan wants to keep you from healing your heart, keep you from healing your mind, keep you from having health, keep you from, uh, from, from, uh, from healing your family. That's what Satan wants. He wants to keep you while God wants to change you. And if you don't understand that, nothing is going to change. You have to know who is, who's, who's, the, who's the reason for my lack of change because I'm telling you right now, Every single one of us right now, there is an area in our life that has been our lie that we have yet to come out from because the enemy wants to make sure you stay there. But that's going to change. Are you all ready for that? Okay, now let's, let's go practical now because some of you look very, very scared. <laughs> I'm not saying go home and start killing... Flies in your house are not demons. Don't start going crazy like, oh, Pastor said they're demons. God, God. Pastor, I killed the demons in my house. No. No. It's an illustration. It's just. Okay. God calls us sheep. And he calls himself good what? Shepherd. So he says, you're the sheep. He's like, I'm the good shepherd. So I, I brought out an article on, on sheep. Sheep are constantly uh, pestered by flies. And here's the article. Y'all ready? And tell me if this makes sense to maybe you and me and maybe someone you know. At certain times of the year, great clouds attack the shepherd's flocks. Clouds of flies attack the shepherd's flock. Look. These insects would especially attack the heads of the sheep. The heads burrowing into their ears and noses. For relief from this agonizing annoyance, sheep will deliberately beat their heads. How many times have you beat yourself up? I'm stupid. I'm no good. See, there I go again. I'm an idiot. You just beat your head. You're just constantly just beating yourself, beating yourself. They would beat their heads against trees, rocks, posts, or brush. They will rub them in the soil and thrash around against woody growth. In extreme cases of intense infestation, a sheep may even kill itself. Suicide is the Lord of the flies. To get you so tormented that nothing can take it away, that people think why? Because Satan sold them a, a bit of lies, and you're thinking that taking my life is what's going to fix this. This is the answer. It's a lie. It's not the answer. Look at this. And often advanced stages of infection from these flies will lead to blindness. Huh? Have you ever met Christians, people, you know, like, what happened to you? You never used to think like that. Dude, are you blind? Can't you see it? He's wrong for you. She's wrong for you. Hello? They're going to rip you off. Don't hang with them. Your life's going to change. You hang out with that group, you're going down. But they're Christians. I don't give a rip. Title doesn't mean you're Christian. Life says you're Christian. Fruit says you're Christian. Okay? There's got to be fruit in my life. You will know them by their fruit. There's got to be fruit, not flies. And because of all this, when the nose flies hover around the flock, some of the sheep become frantic with fear and panic. Where does fear and panic come from? Huh? Where does anxiety come from? Huh? 
Lord of the Flies. See, know the enemy of your change. Because until you know who the enemy is, man, you are hitting aimlessly. But once you know who the real enemy is, now you're going to realize, man, i got to stop accepting these lies. That I have allowed the enemy to drop his eggs in my head, and I just keep thinking over and over the lies that he's placed there. So it goes on to say, and some of the sheep become frantic with fear and panic in their attempt to escape their tormentors. To protect the sheep, the shepherd would make a mixture of olive oil. Check this out. And anoint the head of the sheep, rubbing the oil into its wool, especially around its nose, eyes, and ears. How does that, how does that apply to us? Let me tell you how this applies to us. You see, what happens with you and me is that some little bug... He works his way into our ears. He works himself into your head. He works himself into your eyes. And little do you know, slowly but surely, you come to a place where it just started with a little bug. And now your situation has grown to this big proportion of just madness. It started, but it started with a little fly. And the enemy was able to get in there long enough that you were willing to just let the flies keep coming. And you just let, kept letting them speak. For example, it says that, that they would come to the head. What does the head mean? Well, you know what? When, when flies lay their eggs, okay, they're looking for a nest. God never created your mind to be Satan's nest. Okay? The Bible says, as a man thinks, so is he. Guess what? What you keep thinking on a daily basis, and only you know that, okay? We, you can lie to man, but you can't lie to God. You know what you're thinking. I know what I'm thinking. And what I keep thinking is what I keep becoming. What I keep thinking is what I keep living. If I keep thinking, my knee, oh, my knee hurts, and my knee, and oh, my knee. And I just talk, all I do is talk about the pain in the knee, the pain. That's a fly. You see, the truth is, by his stripes, I am you. You have to exchange. Come on, God wants to do an exchange in 2018 with you and me. And he says, let's exchange that lie with my truth. Right? Because he said, because my truth will make you free from the flies. It, it, but that exchange needs to happen. God's just not going to, boof, you're changed. No, 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 no. You have to make an exchange. You have to, you have to define what lies have I been meditating on what have i been thinking about please stay with me you got to write it out because if you don't write it out then you don't know what your issue is okay so if you're afraid to fail then write it i'm afraid to fail if you're afraid to die write it i'm afraid to die if you're afraid of not having en- uh, enough for your for your old age for your retirement write it i have been afraid of not having enough for my retirement and then you exchange that lie and you say man with god all things are possible to him who believes huh you begin to ex- you got to exchange it that means that we have to get ready set grow i told you come 2018 i'm going to rub you in the right way in a wrong way, but a right way. But it's going to be wrong. You're going to be like, dang, that was wrong. I'm going to be like, but it was right. That kind of wrong right. You guys get it? Okay, so it's going to be like, all, listen, every sermon, every Sunday, I'm going to rub you wrong. Why? Because I, I'm done playing church. I, that, was, that was so yesterday. 2018, change. Can change. I'm going to see you prosper. Not just financial. I'm going to see you prosper even as your soul prospers. Your mind, your will, your emotions, you're going to prosper. You're going to prosper. You're going to prosper relationally. You're going to prosper socially. You're going to prosper financially. You're going to prosper spiritually. You're going to prosper. Every time you walk in this place, you're going to be filled with faith, hope, and God's love, man. You're going to be just pouring out love. You watch and see. How's that going to happen, Pastor? Because that's not how I'm feeling right now. It's okay. That's why you're here. Listen. So the head, right? So they, bu- they come and they buzz around your head. Bzzz. They buzz, 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 buzz. Sometimes the buzz of Satan is louder than the voice of God in your ears. And then you wonder why. I hear people talk more about the buzz than they do about the voice. 
What's wrong with you? Oh, it's already bad. Dude, it's only like January 7th. Could it be that bad, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this looks familiar. Oh, wait a minute. This was you last year. Okay. <laughs> was that wrong? <laughs> it would just go like this. Go wrong. That's wrong. So wrong. But it was right. Right? It's 2018. Come on. Grow. Okay, that's your head. Okay, so boom. Nose. What's nose? Let me tell you, you better watch what you inhaled in 2018. Stop inhaling gossip. Stop inhaling slander. Stop inhaling stuff about other people. Stop inhaling that because you'll get a bad infection. Stop it. Okay, the enemy knows what kind of flies to send your way. And and sisters and sisters so and so. And you're just like, yeah, and you're just like, oh my God, you inhaled it, you're dying now, my God, help us, Jesus, like, where'd you hear that from, from Buzz so-and-so? Stop inhaling offense, it doesn't help you, God's not even agreeing with you, when you have an offense about a brother or sister, God's not saying, oh my God, you're so right, Mauricio, oh my God, you know what, I'm sorry, I didn't even see that, and here they call me God, Wow. God doesn't agree with you. He doesn't, say with me right now, God does not agree with me. God agrees with his word. Give him a clap, amen? Thank you, God. Can you imagine if God always went off of what you thought? Help us, Jesus. This world would be over. Man, you wouldn't have any friends. But thank God that his mercy and grace abounds overly and abundantly and above everything that we ask, hope, think, or even imagine. Are you ready to, to, to grow this year, yes or no? Okay, good. And then my eyes, what does that say? Well, you keep, when you keep perceiving what you want to see and not what God wants to show you, your external is never going to change. You got to stop it. We never have enough. Yeah, that's because you keep seeing what you have now. Man, y'all need to turn off your phones, man. I mean it. I'm going to answer that phone right now. It's okay. I forgive you. <laughs> you were wrong, but I forgive you. I'm not, I'm not even going to look and see where that came from. I'm just going to let it go, Father. Grow. I'm going to pursue what God wants to show me. I'm going to stop letting the devil blind me from what he wants to show me. He wants to show you that you're coming out, that you're getting through. Come on. Yes, I'm in the storm. Yeah, but you're, you're not in it. You're going through it. You're going to go in and you're coming out. Amen. Come on. You're going to perceive different. You're, gonna, you're no longer going to go by what you see. You're going to ask God, God, show me what you see. Because you know what? All I see is negative. You're going to change that. My ears, come on. One negative report, you get moved. Oh, my God, it's over. You get disgruntled. You get discouraged. Come on, you get disillusioned. You get all the disses. Come on, let's get rid of the diss and let's add some encouragement to it. You know what's encouraging? When you open your Bible. And you be, begin to read God's truth. Encouraging begins to feed your ears with the right stuff that you need to hear. <laughs> okay, so what's the cure, Pastor? Okay, you just said all that. That's wonderful. Nice. What's my cure? It's found in Psalms chapter 23, verse 5. It says, this is David. David was swatting all the time his enemies. Man, his enemies were always after him. Come on, the devil wanted to destroy David. But David got the revelation. He said, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You know what? Man, David takes it back to your campsite. He says, you prepare a table for me. Where do you think David lived most of his life? Always in the desert where the flies are. And he says, you prepare a table before my enemies, in the presence of my enemies. Let me tell you something. When you begin to understand the presence, the person, and the power of God, 
Man, you can sit in the midst of your enemy while all hell is breaking loose and there ain't no fly in hell that can come near you. God does it on purpose to show the enemy, ha, ha, can't touch this one. And he anoints my head. Look at this. He anoints my what? Head. He anoints my what? With what? With what? My head? Yeah. What do sheep get anointed with? He anoints my head with oil. My cup, it runs over. Oil represents Holy Spirit. God's saying, in 2018, Mauricio, this is how you're going to know me. You're going to begin to be very well acquainted with my Holy Spirit. Because once you begin to come in the place of understanding and knowing who my spirit is in you, when you learn to be very well acquainted with my spirit, not just any spirit, my Holy Spirit in you, what will begin to happen is you will come to a place where you will start yielding yourself to my spirit, my presence, and it's only in the yielding that my spirit begins to transform your life. Another thing that represents the Holy Spirit is fire. Guess what? I used to bust out antique. I still bust out fires to this day. When I start fires, I, I put canela oil on my fire. For me, that canela, whatever it's called, citronella, whatever. And yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> Grab my swatter right now. <laughs> and I do, and I burn it with, with uh, centinella oil. Why? Because I want all the bugs away. I know the fire is not enough. I need the oil. I need the oil. Say it. I need the oil. Come on. Too many of you, you know of the Holy Spirit, but you're not in relation with the Holy Spirit. You know, I believe in the Holy Spirit, Pastor. Oh, yeah, I believe in the Holy Spirit. But you don't, you don't walk with the Holy Spirit. He doesn't guide you. He doesn't lead you. I'm not saying that for everybody. But most of us, let's be honest, don't, don't think just because you know the Holy Spirit that you're being led by the Holy Spirit. Don't pretend. That's, that's, that's a lie when you're saying, oh, no, I'm good with the Holy Spirit. Do you talk to him every day? Does he guide you every day? Does he counsel you every day? Do you talk to him before you talk to Sister Tell it all first? Do you, do you, go, do you go to him? Do you, do, you get, do you get wisdom from him? Do you get understanding from him? When you're about to get offended, do you talk to the Holy Spirit about your offense? When you start hearing stuff about other people, do you ask the Holy Spirit, is that the truth? Because the last time I checked in the Bible, the Holy Spirit leads you into all Satan leads you into all lies. Hmm? He leads into all truth. How many are ready for change in 2018? All right. I'm already done. I'm already done. Just give me two minutes. I'm done. Write this down for your note takers. The anointing is the Holy Spirit. It's in our app if you take notes. I don't want to miss that. And then a symbol of the Holy Spirit is fire. Okay. Some of you, you have the Holy Spirit, but you need a fresh baptism of God's fire in your life. Your fire has been put out. Do you remember when you used to walk in power? Do you remember when you used to go tell everybody about Jesus? Do you remember when you were afraid to pray for someone who was sick? And then all of a sudden, you've damped that part of your life? Like it's the thing of yesterday. It's not the thing of the new. You're going to lay hands on the sick this year. Come on, you're going to pray for people this year. Man, you're going to get over yourself this year. Huh? It's not going to be about you anymore. God's world does not, does not revolve around your universe. <laughs> not this year. This year, I need you, God. I need you. I want you. <laughs> Part two of the article of the sheep. Once the oil has been applied to the sheep's head, there was an immediate change in the behavior. Once the Holy Spirit came upon the sheep's head, there was an immediate change in their behavior. You live different. You don't have the same stuff that used to tick you off. My behavior's changed. The Holy Spirit is the only one who can change your behavior. Keep trying. Try it on your own strength. Tell me how that's working for you. And trust me, I'm, I'm all into leadership. 
I love the whole thing, you know what, 21 days of this, 60 days of this becomes a habit, blah, 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 blah. I get it. I love that. Okay, I believe that. But I have tried that, and I have tried the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit has done it like that. You can struggle and figure it out with you, or you can get in the presence of the Holy Spirit and be like, change me, because I want you to invade me. That's a difference. And not just today when you're inspired in church. No, this is every day you and him. Acts 10, 38, and I'm closing for sure. <laughs> I ain't lying. You got to have this first. I'm 10 minutes early anyways. I'm good. It says, you know how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power? Jesus went around doing good. He healed all who were under the devil's power. God was with him. In 2018, you and God are going to walk together. And you're going to see that the Holy Spirit is going to empower you to be effective. Stand to your feet. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.